Hey creators, whether you're just getting started with Adobe Fresco or you're a seasoned digital artist, this video is for you. These settings and shortcuts are designed to help you get the most out of the program from smoother brush strokes to perfectly painting your design in just a few seconds. Now, missing one of these settings can result in lower quality work. And have you missed out on key features that would completely transform the way that you create? So this feature is a must for anybody just getting started with Adobe Fresco. And that's the brush smoothing option. So this feature is great for anybody that's ever felt frustrated by shaky or uneven lines while they're drawing. So when you turn on brush smoothing, it automatically gives you a better control and precision of your line art, no matter how shaky your hand is. Let me show you how you can turn it on. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go all the way to the left hand side. I'm gonna either pick a pixel brush or a vector brush. And for this example, I'm gonna go with vector. Then once I select my vector brush, I'm gonna come all the way down Third to the bottom, I'm gonna click this little squiggly line icon. This right here is our smoothing option. So you can adjust this from zero to 100, just depending on how smooth you want your line work to be. Zero is no smoothing at all, 100 is at the max. So just to show you the example, I'm gonna draw a smiley face with zero smoothing. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but first I'm gonna increase the smoothing to 100. Then on the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead, draw a smiley face again. And as you see at the same speed, I drew the smiley face and the line work is way cleaner. This next setting is a game changer when it comes to coloring your artwork. And that's the reference layer option. Okay, so why is this setting such a big deal? So this setting allows you to color inside your line art or your sketch on a separate layer. So think of it like a digital coloring book. Now, this is a good thing for a few reasons. Number one, it allows you to edit your painting or erase any mistakes and not worry about ruining your line art. And if you can't tell, this is huge. Number two, using this tool will speed up your coloring process because it allows you to paint any enclosed shape with just a tap of your pencil. And the best part about this feature is the color always perfectly drops inside of the lines. All right, so this is how you set the reference layer. So you're gonna go all the way to the right hand side and you're gonna click this layer icon right here, the stack paper. Once you go there, the thing you wanna look for is your black and white drawing. This only works with a black and white drawing. So I'm gonna click this layer right here. This panel's gonna pop up and I'm gonna go all the way down until I see set as reference. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click that. And now I have the option on, but just a heads up, this only works if you have an open layer underneath. So I'm gonna hit this plus icon here to create a new layer. I'm gonna drag this layer right underneath the reference layer and now I'm be able to color inside the lines like a coloring book. So I'm gonna go ahead, have it red colored. And as you can see, I'm just tapping inside any enclosed area. And I am quickly coloring in my Deadpool drawing. So before we dive into the next setting, I just wanna remind you guys to subscribe to the channel. This platform is all about providing artists like you with the resources you need to improve your craft and land your dream job in the creative industry. So if you're finding value in this video, make sure you paint that subscribe button and join our growing community. And trust me, you're definitely not going to miss the upcoming tips and tricks that we share here. Our next setting is an underrated feature that can save you tons of time, and that's our snap to shape option. So this powerful feature helps you to create perfect geometric shapes with minimal effort. If you've ever struggled to draw perfect circles, squares, or straight lines freehand, this tool automatically fixes that for you. So this is how you turn the setting on. All right, so we're gonna find the setting by going all the way to the right hand side, and we're gonna wanna click this gear icon right here. Once we click the gear icon, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and also click the app settings. All right, once we click the app settings, we wanna make sure that we are in the input screen. I'm gonna scroll down and the option that we're looking for is the snap to shape. We're gonna to wanna to turn that on. I'm gonna draw a circle, draw it a few times, but I'm actually gonna hold down on the screen. Once I do, it will snap it into a perfect circle shape. And this option works for circles, squares, and triangles. This next setting is a hidden secret I didn't know I needed. And if it's used correctly, it will help you design twice as fast. And that's the new symmetry setting. This feature automatically mirrors your strokes, letting you draw both sides at once without worrying about inconsistent shapes. So this is how you can find this helpful setting. So you're gonna go all the way to the right hand side to this toolbar. So what we're looking for is this little grid icon here. We're gonna go ahead and click that. And it's gonna give us a bunch of different options under precision. So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and this is what we're looking for. This is a symmetry setting. We're gonna turn it on. 
Once we turn the symmetry tool on, it's actually gonna give us a bunch of different options that we could choose from. You could choose between vertical, horizontal, and quarters. And this one is radical, which you could see is in pizza slices, and it gets more extreme the farther that you go. So our next setting is a hidden gem that could definitely boost your workflow, and that's the touch modifier. So the touch modifier is probably the most interesting setting on this entire list. And that's because it's a shortcut button that allows you to switch between different functions like erasing and resizing on the fly. So if the touch modifier option isn't on, these are steps you could take to make it available. So you can find the touch modifier over here by this gear icon, you're gonna click that. Then if you go down to the second to last option, you'll see the touch shortcut and click that on. That's gonna turn on your touch modifier. You'll see this white transparent circle appear onto your canvas. One of the best features the touch modifier has is it helps you to erase your line work, just like so. But what happens is sometimes you go over the artwork and you just do too much, right? But with the touch modifier, so I'm gonna tap it one, double tap it once, and I'm gonna hit it one more time. And now it's in erase mode. So now if I go over anything that's outside of two lines that intersect, it will instantly delete it. And not only will it do it, but it will be clean. Our next setting is essential for drawing perfect lines or angles, and that's our ruler tool. And this setting is exactly how it sounds. It allows you to bring a digital ruler to help you draw perfect lines for all your designs, typography, or any geometric artwork, and everything in between. But just a heads up, that's not all that this tool does. It also allows you to pick a few geometric shapes that you can use as a guide to help you draw perfect shapes. Now, you can find this setting by doing the following. So if you're looking for the ruler setting, you're gonna find it all the way on your right hand side. And you're gonna wanna move all the way to the bottom. And once you see this ruler icon, you wanna go ahead and click it. Then the ruler is gonna pop up. Now here's a few things you should know. By using two fingers, you can rotate the ruler to any position that you want. Our next setting is an absolute must for anybody who's looking to speed up their workflow, and that's a multi-gesture option. So what this setting does is allows you to undo, redo with just simple finger gestures. Okay, so in order to turn this option on, again, you're gonna go all the way to the right-hand side at the very top, you're gonna hit this gear icon. Then when a setting option pops up, you're gonna go all the way down to the app setting, and you're gonna hit this box right here. This is gonna bring up a new panel, and what we're looking for right here is the disable undo and redo gesture. And you're gonna find this right over here. So we're gonna click that off, and then we're gonna hit the X button and go back to our canvas. So now what's gonna happen is anytime Let's say if we draw something, right, I'm going to do a little squiggly line, and we want to undo it, all we have to do is tap with two fingers on the screen, it's going to disappear. If I want to redo what I did, I'm going to tap with three fingers on the screen, it would bring anything back. While we're on the topic of speeding up your workflow, this next setting is too good not to use, and that's the eyedropper shortcut. This handy feature lets you quickly pick colors from your canvas without having to manually select them from the color wheel. Now, this setting can be found pretty easily. So if you're looking for the eyedrop shortcut, we're gonna go all the way to the top right hand side and we're gonna hit this gear icon. Then once we tap the gear icon, we'll go all the way to the bottom, we're gonna hit the app settings. So in the input section, we're gonna look for the long press eyedropper, which you can see right here. We're gonna switch that on. And once I click that, it's actually gonna show me a new option for duration. So all this means is how long do I need to have my finger on the screen before the eyedropper shows up. So, so now, if I want to create a new background for my Tiger football design, all I got to do is hold my finger on the screen, and then it allow me to choose on any color I want, as long as my finger is still holding down. So I think orange would probably work the best. So I'll go ahead and choose orange. And then if you look on my left hand side, you'll see that the color picker has chosen that color. Now. If I wanna go ahead and just drop it in there, now I have a new orange background. Now in my opinion, this next setting is a very important one, and for some reason, I don't hear a lot of artists talk enough about it. And that's bookmarking your favorite brushes. So, if you're like me, and you have hundreds of brushes in your collection, trying to find the right one can be a little bit of a nightmare. But Adobe Fresco has a handy feature that lets you bookmark your most used brushes, saving you time and frustration. So all I gotta do now is hit that star icon. So once I do that, this brush is now gonna be part of my favorites. You can find your favorite folder right at the top. And as you can see, you see a collection of all my favorite brushes. Just like I said before, definitely helpful if you have more than a handful of brushes. Next up, we have a setting that I think every new user should customize as soon as possible. 
and that's the pressure sensitivity. So why is this setting so important to new users? And this is because everybody's drawing style is different. Some of us are able to draw with just a light touch, while others feel more comfortable with a harder press. By adjusting the pressure sensitivity, you can make your tools respond exactly how you like. So if you wanna edit your pressure setting, first you're gonna pick whatever brush you wanna go with, and then I'm gonna go all the way to down to the very bottom, and I'm gonna hit this slider right here. Now it's gonna bring up our brush settings, and then what I wanna do is I wanna navigate again all the way to the bottom, and then right here, I'm gonna follow my stylish pressure. So in this panel is where we're gonna customize how heavy or how light we wanna be able to draw with our Apple Pen. So for me, I like to be right in the middle. And in this box that you see right here, you'll be able to test just to see what it looks like. So if you go heavy, as you can see, I'm pressing down, it's hard. If I press light, nothing shows up. I have to press extremely hard for it to show up. However, if I go to light, I'm barely pressing on it and it's already showing up pretty thick. So like I said previously, you're gonna to wanna to experiment and try to figure out which option best suits your needs. Now for our last setting, I have a simple but incredibly helpful feature. And that's the brush stamp preview setting. So what makes this feature so helpful? So when you turn this on, you'll see a visual representation of your brush tip right on your canvas, making it easy to know exactly where your strokes are landing. So in order to turn on the brush stamp, we're gonna to go to the top right hand corner. We're gonna hit this gear icon once again. Then we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, hit the app settings. This is gonna take us to another panel, which is our input once again. Then this time around, we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom until we see brushes, which is located right here. We're gonna click brushes. And this is the option that we're looking for, brush preview. So it's off, we're gonna turn it on. We could either do cross hairs or we could do a uh, brush stamp. I think do brush stamp just so I can see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Then once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and X this panel, get rid of it. And now if I pick, let's say if I pick a pixel brush and I'm gonna go with, I don't know, let's see a soft round brush. So as I have my pencil hover over my canvas, I can see exactly where I'm gonna be painting. So if I press down, now I can see exactly what I'm doing. So those are my 11 settings that you need to turn on on Adobe Fresco. Please let me know if you find this video helpful or you feel like I missed a setting that I should cover in a future video. So now that you got your feet wet, you have a better understanding of Adobe Fresco. If you're looking to learn more, check out this video right here.